What's up gamers, I'm Coach, and this is my Hardcore Iron Man. Last episode we delved deep into the caves under Waterbirth Island for our dragon hatchet, hunted dinosaurs on Anachronia for our first dragon Matic, completed Plague's End for access to the elven city of Prithinus, and opened just over 100 very willy reward bags, ending us in obliteration, a tier 87 weapon for magic. Up until now, the goal on this account has been simple. Survive to get a quest cape. Today, that goal goes in the bin. Look, I've got a level with you. I didn't seriously expect to survive this far. I had made some rough plans for if the account survived, but they were rough. Now? Now I know I can survive to get a quest cape, and I've been laying out a plan for exactly where I want to take this account. I want to make it to the front page of the achievement high scores for Hardcore Iron Man. It's going to be a massive undertaking that will involve doing all sorts of weird tasks, dangerous PBM achievements, and getting a trimmed completionist cape. All of that is a little bit too much to focus on at once though, as there are literally thousands of achievements to do. So we're going to take our current focus of getting a quest cape and expand on it a little bit to include all the mini quests, sagas, and area task sets. This will give us some clear goals to focus on that will take out a huge number of achievements along the way and unlock pretty much every area and skilling method in the game so we can take on the really big challenges in the next season. In this episode, I'm going to make a push to clean up the lower level quests from a quest list and just keep going until I get a quest dice. Easy! I also plan on getting my obliteration up and running. We're 86 magic right now, so I only need one more magic level to equip it. I might push all the way to 99 magic though, just so I can get a bit more damage out. Now if only these stupid druids would give me the mystical sand seed, that would be great. I swear we haven't trained woodcutting since we knocked out 55 for lunar diplomacy, and here's 80, which just so happens to be one of the requirements for the light within. Oh, and you got a lot of cheeky puff run. Here's spiders coming in with 90 farming today. The first serious job I want to get stuck into is 87 magic so I can equip my obliteration. So I popped off to ED3 to grind trash mobs for some XP. Editor's note. Um, I record a lot of the series a while ago before the combat XP relic with necromancy. So uh, grinding ED3 trash runs was the best way to get combat XP back then, but it doesn't work anymore. So uh, my recommendation for combat training would probably be either just doing some Slayer or trying to find low defense, high hit points mobs. Undead are particularly good if you can get yourself a salve amulet E. The loot is pretty terrible, but the XP is wicked fast, and getting 87 took no time at all. Killing these mini bosses also gets you a few dungeoneering tokens, and along the way I picked up enough to purchase the scroll of cleansing, which will save a few supplies when I'm restocking on potions. I gotta say this thing looks absolutely sick, and I know exactly where to test it out. I have an old score to settle. When we did this with the tier 75 Vanquish, we were out of supplies by the end. This time around, we are cruising through the waves, melting through everything. When we got to Jad, I still had most of my supplies left. A cheeky dragon's breath to pull the healer's aggro, and Jad goes down. Fire cape obtained. I've decided to come to the Warriors Guild and get myself a Dragon Defender so I can have a chance of getting a Barrows Defender piece if I get more Barrows Reapers. Makes sense, right? I've collected a bunch of points from the minigames below, so I'm just going to keep killing these guys until I get Dragon. It didn't take very long, but here's our Bronze Defender. And Iron, Steel, Black, Mithril, Addy, Rune, and finally the Dragon Defender. I figured a good way to start the questing for this episode would be to complete all of the Pathfinder quests and get the easiest tier out of the way so I don't need to come back for it later. I start out with Clock Tower, A Soul's Bane, and Myths of the White Lands. Three wee standalone quests that, well, they're not too much to talk about. One piercing note really caught my attention though. A bit of a fun murder mystery in the desert with a great storyline and voice acting. This one has a few other rewards to claim later as well, like the ability to illuminate god books, which has a pretty decent prayer XP reward. Broken Home is another awesome quest. I know some people hate it though. You can also get the Asylum Surgeon's Ring if you complete the quest in under 37 minutes. But since I'm a hardcore Iron Man and I'm going to be camping the Ring of Death, I'm just going to come back for that later. And that's Dwarf Cannon done for a Dwarf Cannon. And the last of the Pathfinder quests is Rag and Bone Man, which also has a little wish list that comes with it. Getting all the bones for this one took a hot minute, but it is done. And so is the first tier of quests from our journal. I just got my first Karapak Reaper, and now that I have a cannon, I kind of want to start killing this guy as he drops a lot of cannonballs. I haven't got a Pontifex ring yet, and we're still in Lunas, so this might hurt. Yep, this hurts. 
Oh, 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 it's wrong prayer, wrong prayer. And I missed the step under there. I think it is definitely possible to get solo kills here with my gear, but uh, I'm not sure it's worth the hassle. Without the Bonifex rank, making mistakes is just super punishing. One of our clanmates offered to give us a hand, and the rest of the kills have gone really smoothly. Just let me die. That little reaper netted us close to 2,000 cannonballs. Massive thank you to our clanny Annie, who came along and gave us a hand with that. You freaking rock, dude! Oh, it finally happened! I got, I got my mystical sand seed from these crux eckle druids. I went from 75 to almost 79 thieving here, so I have been at this for a hot minute now. The seed is going to be great, however, as it provides unlimited teleports to the Hetz Oasis hip patch. I think I'm going to go AFK some harps now, so I can attune my crystal teleport seed for unlimited tellies to perf as well. Oh, there we go. So we've been AFK and harps for a little minute. And that just got us level 84 crafting. Nice. Doesn't look very exciting, but it is. With just a cheeky little stew boost here, we can push all the way up to 90 crafting and make ourselves a Hytrix necklace. Yeah, let's get this bad boy enchanted. And there we have it, Reaper Necklace, that is quite a big upgrade. Stats might be the same as the Amulet of the Forsaken, but it has a secondary effect that increases accuracy with each damaging hit up to a maximum of 3%, which is pretty huge. Okay, apparently we need to complete the Eyes of Gloffrey to unlock crystal singing so we can actually tune a crystal teleport seed to make crystal tools. So I knocked that one out quickly, and after a bit more AFKing at harps, I have the dust together to make the attuned crystal teleport seed. Oh, I've just done a quick round of penguins here, and I'm going to throw all of these lamps into Herblore. There we go! 393,000 Herblore XP. That takes us up to level 97. Huge! So back in episode 11, we did all those quests to unlock Dominion Tower, and I still haven't done the 400 kill count required for mines. So here we are. With the new expanded goals now including diary tasks, I will eventually have to complete everything but rumble mode achievements in here. One achievement that I can do now that will only get harder if I leave it is unlocking all 20 pages for the Dominion Tower journal. Plan is simple. Go up in climber mode and just keep going until I can't go anymore, then claim from the chest. I'm hoping to get all the journal pages before 400kc. The combat XP box from us are kind of nice for prayer as an iron. And there's level 80 right there. First page took 54 kills to get. I need 20 in total, so I'm kind of hoping our luck improves on these. Okay, page 2, 20 kills later. Page number 3 on kill 100. Mm, maybe we'll get there, we'll, we'll need to get lucky. Alright, this is a massive run with almost 400k Dominion Factor, and we get three pages in the chest! Now we are talking several hours grinding, and we are at 395 out of 400kc, and I need two more pages. I really can't be bothered doing the Desert Treasure Bosses, so I'm going to claim on 122k Dominion Factor and just hope. Oh, there we go. All 20 journal pages completed. Let's knock out these last five boss kills. Well, it was a slog, but it is done now. 400 Dominion Tower KC, whole journal completed. Now I won't need to come back here until I've completed all the quests for the Desert Elite Diaries, which feels more like an episode 19 thing, to be honest. Oh, also, 400 KC one day, just by the way. I have been waiting for Flash Powder Factory to come on Spotlight, and it finally is. This rather tedious mini-game will let me unlock the factory outfit pieces, specifically the gloves, body, and boots for the three-piece set effect, a 10% chance to make a four-dose potion instead of three, and the modified botanist mask, which gives a 5% chance to double a potion when training Herblore. So a couple of hours in, and I have enough Brian points to buy the boots, so I should fail the obstacles a little less often now. Ah, yes. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> Botner's mask next. I'm doing the whole thing in one sitting, so I figure the order doesn't matter too much after boots here. 
And there's the mask add on and a little bit of my soul gone. Okay, six hours in the torch pit and I have enough fella to buy the factory top. Buying this little beastie with Thaler is actually saving me like four or five hours right now. So this is why we're doing it on spotlight. All day. All day I've been here. We're done. We're done. We're finally done. You guys got like 30 seconds of me buying rewards. I had 12 hours failing obstacles in the torture pit of misery. But hey, hey, we had three piece factory outfit and the botanist mask with its add on. So oh, we're free. So we got one dragon manic last episode, but down the line, I'm going to need a second one so I can make the tier 99 manic. We're starting off the day with 164 big game hunts, so let's see how many it takes. <laughs> one. <laughs> it takes one hunt. And we got another baby Vagrata. So I actually kept the AFKing harps for a little minute when I was getting dust for my crystal teleport seed, and I already have the 4000 to make one of these Maddox into the crystal variant. I have a lot of infernal ashes from all of all the events I've been doing. And I kind of want to get the prayer outfit unlocked so I can get that juicy plus 6% XP when I'm training prayer. The plan's simple. Load a preset with ashes at the bank, hack to file in, down the trap door, over the wall and down the stairs, and dive to this tile, step to this tile, surge, down the last set of stairs to fill up on slime buckets, hack to file back to the altar, and offer the ashes. Each ash offered at the Ectophuntus grants us 5 Ecto tokens. I need a total of 6,000 Ecto tokens to buy the full outfit. That took us from 81 to 83 per hour, and we hit 2300 total level in the process. And with that, I can collect my last few Ecto tokens and buy the last piece of the first stage outfit. Looks kind of snazzy in combo with the Hunter outfit too, what do you reckon? Have I ever mentioned how OP Herby Werby is? Cause that just got us 98 Herb Lore. So I've been meaning to do this ever since we completed Desperate Measures back in like episode 10 I think. And uh, I've finally come to Anachronia to mine some Adamantite for the Rano Totem middle so I can put that up. Um, yeah, so I might have also gone on a bit of a bender and explored the entirety of Anachronia, pulled up all 60 of the hidden Zygomites and searched all the rubble for totem pieces. I even went so far as to stew boost for a plus six so I could get the one locked behind a level 85 section of the agility course. This meant that I had some completed totems to put up, even if the totem of treasure is the only useful one I have for now. Remo totem is complete and now I can charge my totems with ease. Just doing some archaeology mysteries and we're wrapping up Dagon Buy here which gives us the pact with Dagon which we can sign for the ability to make binding contracts. This unlocks ancient summoning for us. We just got an invite to go do some crow and I can't say no. Can we spoon a little something something no? I think we can spoon a little something something. <laughs> some Cryplo bottoms. We can spoon some Cryplo bottoms. And that is a beautiful chest. This means we have three beast Crypt Bloom on the account, so I uh, should probably go fix it up and get 90 defense so I can wear it. Just a cheeky little stew boost to 90 crafting, and there is our Crypt Bloom repaired. The next goal is just sending 90 defense so I can equip it, and probably 99 magic so I can increase my damage output a bit more and swap spell books with the bank at the cave. The plan for this is, of course, 83 and we're going to be sending this one on stream with some viewers yeah, that's our first level of the day 87 constitution coming in oh yeah we have 120 combat as well and level 88 defense two more levels and i can put the crypt bloom on we just got morty let's go i'm gonna put morty on really quick all right Level 89 defense gamers! Yo! There it is! 90 defense, ladies and gentlemen! We're getting Crypt Bloom on after this run. I think it's time for a very big upgrade to this preset chat. <laughs> uh, what a Iron Man equipment set. We love it though. Alright now let me just uh, let me just update my combat XP because I need it. I want some magic XP now. I still got the Lunar Gloves though, for, for cuteness. 
89 magic coming in. Oh, hit points level. Let's go. 88. And here's our first life in the obliteration. 63 invention. Level 90 magic coming in. Love to see it. There we go. Level 91 magic. Oh, we huge. Oh, we huge. Oh, we got Hanto. Nice. Free tokens. Level 89 constitution. Very nice to see. <gasps> Yo, actually, we just hit 100,000 Dungeoneering tokens so we can buy our charming in. No more picking charms up manually. Bro, we just got to a second bet today. What the hell? Get some more rats is ready. Because we just hit 92 magic. Oh, my lordy. Halfway there. And there's level 93. Just six levels to go. Level 90 constitution coming in. Oh, these games are just unreal. Oh, boy. And there is 94 magic coming in as well. Taking us up to combat level 125. Six combat levels so far. We just hit level 95 combat. 95, no, because we just hit 95 magic and 126 combat. Okay. Love me a cheese and Vegemite Samuel J. Oh, 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 I gotta do a quick siphon after this run. Charge drain reduction, maximum charge improvement, and jump chance reduction. There's 91 constitution, ladies and gentlemen. 96 magic, let's go. Three levels to go, three levels to go. My crap limbs, level 12, boys. I'll have to do a siphon after this. And there we go, 68 invention. 97 magic in the bag. Oh, there we go, 92 constitution. Halfway there. That's pretty nice. Oh, level 98 magic. Just one level to go, game is one level to go. Just another quick siphon. 69 invention. <laughs> nice. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the last one. Level 99 magic. <sighs> nice, a second 99 on the hardcore. Finally happening, ladies and gentlemen. Once we get our ma excuse me, finally get our magic cape. Oh, I'm so stoked. We finally did it. We got a second 99 on the account, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. What do you reckon we go send a little bit of PVM? I could test my hand at my first ever Krill Kills now. So we get it up and boosted it to God Wars Dungeon 1 to get 40 Zami KC and try our luck at our first Krill Hour on the account. Because I don't have Soul Split unlocked yet, to make sure I can sustain for the full hour, I decided to just kite Krill for the kills. Staying out of range of his melee attack, so only his mage and range minion will be hitting me for most of the fight. No! Way, boys! Second kill! We get a f***ing armor subjugation! Let's go! Is that a lore book that I need to read? What is that? Razulay's Tale. Yeah, I'll pick that up in a minute. Oh, wait, did this uh, the book despawn? Oh, that's all right. I'm sure I'll drop another one. Going dry? What's that? Yeah, exactly. Well, wait, what? Going where? Sorry? I've never heard of that place. Tense Crow Kill. Let's go! Nice. Ah, oh, no way! See, I told you we'd drop that book again. Oh, and also a Zamorakian Spear. 25 kills so far this hour. That's, that's not too bad. Oh, hmm. Troll. Troll, troll, troll. I'll take it, but it's a troll. Not a bad first hour at Krill. Not a bad first hour at Krill at all. Well, that is certainly not a bad haul. What do we got? We got two effigies, garb, more priest, Greaves and uh, boots. Pretty tasty. Oh, and the Zamorakian spear. And Zamorakian spear. Nearly forgot about that. That was a bit of fun. That was a bit of fun. The next day, we had an Arch Clay Core Reaper, so I decided to try some five mech kills, which were cruisy as. And we managed to pull a Lang artifact as well. It's finally happened now that we're past 120 combat. We have our first Araxor Reaper. A three please script bloom, an obliteration, overloads. I think we might be ready. Open we don't lose any lives here, eh? Why shit! Come on, coach, move your butt! 
Let's booty. We up to, bruh. That went well. Ooh, signing there was less than ideal, but we have a reset in the bank, so I wasn't gonna let that stop me. So we went back and we kicked the spider's butt. And again. And once more for good measure. I'm not gonna lie though, that was a bit of a struggle. I think I'm gonna have to go and get Animate Dead unlocked next episode to try and make that a bit safer. Well, we managed to survive the Araxor Reaper, so now it's time to get stuck back into quests because I really want to get my 275 quest point die knocked out. And we're going to pick back up where we left off and start on Fur and Seek. And then we're going to power through all the adventurer quests. And that is the hides collected for Fur and Seek, but we're not quite done yet because the old old man here is going to give us a wish list so we can unlock the skeletal horror. It's gonna take some mishing, but we're gonna get it done. While most of the Fur and Seek wishlist is nothing special, it's just kill mobs for a common bone drop, there is one bone that's a little bit more exciting. The Femur Bone, which is only dropped by Bork or General Grador. Of course, with our new toys for magic, we went with General Grador to see if we could continue our good luck streak at the God Wars. So we went to get kill count for an hour at General Grador, and our luck was pretty decent. Getting the female bone on our second kill, then picking up a Bandos helm and a pair of tassets. Let's hand in the last of the bones for the fur and seek wish list. Well, there's our skeletal horror done, and our first weekly elite blue scroll. Fur and seek wish list completed. Let's get the Tower of Life underway. There's not much to it, it's a bit of an ancient potato quest. There we go. This Tower of Life completed. Perils of Ice Mountain completed. A disaster averted, global warming stopped, and now we're using wind energy instead of all little enslaved wagons. We found Urjolf. We helped him unfreeze his Musper that turned out to be a, a freaking Marjorie who wasn't very happy about that. Hey, all the Musper completed. We completed rune mechanics and we solved the mysteries of rune guardians. Turns out they're like the clay golems from Uza. You just make them with rune essence instead. But Chef's Assistant done and with it we complete all the adventurer tier quests. We're still three quest points short of our quest die. But I know a little quest that gives more than three quest points. To get us our quest point die at 275 quest points is the Watchtower quest. Nice. That got us another four quest points, taking us up to 276 quest points. And you all know what time that is. Let's take this die. Give it a cheeky roll. Four. Not even a fortunate, bro. Okay, well that. <laughs> we got a mill from our quest die, so that's pretty tasty. Thanks for watching gamers. Make sure to tune in next time when we take on the City of Centerston to unlock Anime Dead and start working on some God Wars Dungeon 3 to make a fully upgraded Shadow Pontifex ring.